So the perioral mound is a uh, obviously a very, very interesting uh, source of discussion amongst patients and the scientific community alike. I was able to find an article that came out of January of this year uh, about perioral mound management in young patients and older patients, and this article came out of China. And as you may recall, in my, in my own practice. I think that liposuction and uh, energy-based skin tightening options are great options for younger patients, but in those with advanced age and especially considering facelift, that this is the gold standard. Uh, these uh, authors have a tendency to uh, disagree with that in China, and I can't wait to tell you about this study that I found. Hi, I'm Dr. Jonathan Zelkin, a board-certified plastic surgeon in Newport Beach, California, uh, here today to discuss perioral mound management and what the perioral mound is and how to make it go away. In previous videos, I discussed liposculpture of a small jelly bean sized area on the corner of the mouth to manage some of this fullness in my patients. And I talked about radio frequency skin tightening and ultimately a facelift as adjunctive options to manage both the skin and the fullness that occurs. In younger patients, fullness in this area is not only an unsightly bulge to some, but it also can contribute to early marionette lines and signs of premature aging. Whereas in older patients, it simply contributes to a deep marionette fold and the jowl. In my practice, I consider the perioral mound just the upper part of the jowl. It's not really distinct, it's kind of contiguous, and in fact, it goes all the way up to the corner of your tear trough, down the nasal labial fold, to the marionette lines, and down to the chin. So to try and break this up and say that there's actually a boundary or an anatomic border is silly. However, there is a sculptable fatty mass in most patients who present to my practice that responds fairly well to liposculpture and radio frequency skin tightening. So these authors uh, are a group in China who studied 37 women who were in their 30s on average and liposuctioned two cc's on average out of each of their perioral mounds. Now that's almost twice what I do in my practice and they used MRIs to study the before and after effects and the influence and the measurable change that this affects. The pictures that they showed of befores and afters were very flawed in this study, in my opinion, and weren't very compelling. And so when people ask me, can I see befores and afters of perioral mountain liposuction, just like buckle fat pad removal, it's not something that really shows well in two dimensions. In fact, if I were to be hypercritical, their befores and afters in their study really had differences in shading and other issues that were kind of distracting to me. So I couldn't really see much of a convincing change in these photos, but what I do in my practice as I've presented in the past is three-dimensional imaging, and this gives us a better sense of where we're addressing the fullness. These authors said that the perioral mound measures about one by 1.5 centimeters, which is approximately what I'm seeing in my patients, but they said that they're taking out two cc's, which is insinuating that they're taking out over one centimeter of height, which doesn't make sense, because one by 1.5 by one centimeter of height is only about 1.5 cubic centimeters, which is 1.5 cc's or 1.5 mils, which is usually almost twice what I take out anyway. So it's not really consistent. I don't really like the way that they describe their technique in this paper. Um, and I think it's kind of overkill, but I found it incredibly interesting that they looked at this with cadaver studies and MRI. The MRI shows that in these patients, they were taking the fullness, the height of the fat layer of the perioral mound from about five millimeters to less than one millimeter. So about four millimeters of reduction per side. Again, 0.4 times 1.5 times one doesn't really equate to two cc's. It's definitely a lot less than that. So I'm not too sure where they got their numbers from, but 
they are showing convincingly that you can change the fatty component of this sort of poorly understood area. I like this paper because it substantiates my own practice. It is hard to promise results with perioral mountain liposuction, and it is hard to say that this can be treated with fillers or other things. I still think that a facelift, which in my hands does contain perioral mound lipo sculpture, I still think of that as the gold standard in aging faces. But in younger faces, lipo sculpture may be enough, and lipo sculpture plus Accutite or face tight, which are radio frequency skin tightening options, do remain the gold standard. So that's my non-scientific study. Compared to this scientific study, I think there's a lot of issues with this paper, but I find it very interesting, and I think it's a very good starting point for the scientific community to understand this you know, it's not really a problem. It's certainly not a deformity or a disease, but it is a thing that creates a lot of distress in my patients, and it's something that does not have a clear-cut solution. So, thank you to the authors um, in China and uh, Dr. Ma. Um, I do appreciate and salute you for putting this together. It's the most, uh, definitely the most rigorous study that we have to date. Um, and I would tell you that my practice is fairly similar with the exception that my patients do not get about two cc's. It's usually about 0 0.5 to one cc's, which I think is what I've seen in the American, uh, amongst American surgical practices about what we take out per side. It's about all I can take out per side. And the patients that they're treating, which are young Asian women, do have more forgiving skin envelopes. So we cannot be as aggressive in Caucasian, for example, patients who have the similar uh, issues. I also think that they failed to talk about buccinator mucosal my myomectomies, and I think by taking out the mucosa and the muscle and some of the, um, the muscular components of the perioral mound, you do have another option if liposuction is not enough. So thank you so much. If this is something that you've been thinking about, don't hesitate to leave your questions and comments below. I will do my best to make more videos on this subject matter, and I would ask you to turn your notifications on and subscribe. Thank you so much. Have a good day.